So in Unit 4, we are looking at the different um, school levels, but how about let's get to know what Japanese schools um, actually look like. So this is how the education system in Japan looks like. So starting from the age of 6, um, you start with compulsory education all the way up to year 9. So Shogakko and Jiugakko, so elementary school and junior school, um, they are the only compulsory components. After that, the students have several options. They can either go into apprenticeship, start working, continue on to high school, or go into other uh, specialized colleges such as TAFE. Okay? Now, um, because of this break in between um, the Shogakko and Jugakko, um, there is very fierce competition in terms of enrollment to more re reputable schools. So that's why the pressure of study is very, very tense at the end of year 9. Uh, and especially at year, year 12 when everyone goes um, start competing for places in uni. However, this pressure is not as high as previously because of the diminishing population, the, the, um, the aging population in Japan. Um, but it is not to say that competition is not fierce because if you want to go to reputable um, um, universities such as Tokyo Daigaku, um, it is extremely, extremely hard to get a placement. People will have to go um, study hard, go you know, participate in extracurricular, also do a lot of outside of school um, classes and awards and uh, win competitions in order to get referral or preferential referral to enter the, the, um, those really um, elite universities. Okay, so Hopefully, by looking at this chart, you will find some similarities, but also some differences between the Australian and the Japanese education system. Now, let's have a look at what a typical shogakko classroom will look like. You will notice that um, there is plenty of storage in a shogakko, despite the number of kids per homeroom. They usually have ranging from 30 to 40 kids in the um, in an urban primary school, it is not so much in the um, in the rural area, but that's the case across all different um, nations, I guess. But what you typically find in the shogakko homurumu is that the chairs and tables are all separatable, and they all look like this. There is a drawer underneath the table for you to put put things, uh, your books and writing equipment, even your bento in. And there are little hooks. It's not very obvious on the picture, but you find there are little hooks on the both sides of the table. That allows you to hang your school bag, your sports bag, or whatever it is. So the Japanese kids are very good at organizing themselves by having their the, uh, belongings all stored and stashed up around them. And then what happens is you'll find that in the back there is a locker space, or not really a locker, but there is storage space for their shoes. It is very common, um, actually, if not all the schools, um, to have the, 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 the practice of asking students to remove their shoes when they get to school or get to their homeroom and then swap into a, a very specific indoor slippers kind of shoes or indoor canvas shoes that they can only wear at school. Now, the, way they, or the reason why they do that is because they believe that when you're walking outside and you bring a lot of dirty stuff like dirt and watermarks to the classroom area. So to avoid that, they then change shoes before they enter the classroom. Or some places they will change shoes at the, big, um, at the main entrance to the school. And why that is important is because, first, it's part of their, um, their culture, part of their customs. Because when you visit someone's house in Japan, you will take off your shoes. Because by bringing dirt into an area, you're bringing in bad spirit and bad luck. And secondly, the kids at school are responsible for the cleaning and the hygiene of the environment. So therefore, by keeping the environment clean all the time, it makes cleaning a lot easier. You'll, you'll see on the right-hand side of the screen, there is a, um, a cabinet with broomsticks, buckets, and, uh, and mops and things. Every classroom in Japan has some sort of um, cleaning equipment storage so that at the end of the day, um, the kids who are in charge of the cleaning for different areas can go and access the equipment. Now, so that's primary school. How about Jugakko? Okay, in 7 to 9, this is typically what a, what a school would look like. Okay, once again, 
um, not that that much of a difference except the desks are a bit higher and the chairs are a bit higher. So you will notice this um, bag thing off the side of the table uh, and there is you know uh, desks all the way up to the back of the room and at the back there is a huge notice board. Now when it comes to lunch time what happens is the kids will reorganize their desks to form groups from tables so they can sit with each other and enjoy their bento. Now in primary school it is um, provided by the my apology for the interruption so in primary school um, lunch provision um, is is part of the system okay everyone gets lunch provided you pay a very school small fee to the school um, and then you get lunch provided it's usually um, served by the students of the class and to make sure the food are served in a very hygienic way the the lunch duty the, the people on lunch duty will wear um, the caps masks and even also aprons okay to make sure they, they re remain um, clean now once you go to Jugako some schools also provide um, lunch provision because part is part of the compulsory education now with a small fee that they pay to the school um, sometimes kids um, from very poor backgrounds they can't even afford that in that case all schools provide some sort of um, fund that they can apply to they can apply for and that will help them pay for their lunch so that is um, how compulsory education is like. You go to school uh, for free and also lunch provision is at a very small charge, if not free, for the people who need assistance. Okay. Now, when you go to, um, whenever you join a Japanese school for lunch, make sure you, you remember these following two phrases. Itadakimasu and gochisou sama deshita. Okay, at the end of the meal. All right. So apart from your day-to-day -day things, this is what um, you know you can see around a typical Japanese school. We're going to start from the top right corner going down. Now top right corner, that's in a great hall. That is what their assembly looks like. Okay, chodei. Okay, if they have a school hall, usually it is uh, just inside the school hall. But if they, uh, if they don't have big enough space, usually just outside. Okay, so chodei happens... Um, pretty much it are once every week some places they have it once every day okay it all depends and underneath the jolet picture we have here a photo this is of our um, sister school in Nagasaki they have a soccer field and they even have a dojo for kara uh, for I think that's judo okay so Japanese schools are usually very um, big um, as long as they're not in the city center um, because they believe that kids should have space for um, physical activities. Okay, let's look at the pictures in the middle. So that's the kids doing uh, cleaning, soji, doing the soji jikan. And you know what? It is not uncommon that your, your class will get rotated or get rostered to clean the boys' toilet or the girls' toilet, depending on what school you have, you're in. So that is why you will find that Japanese kids are very tight, they're very tidy. Um, because they have learned that by keeping the environment tidy, tidy, it is less work for themselves. Okay, on the left hand side, once again, this is our Kaisei High School kids, uh, um, sister school in Nagasaki. Um, these are Yakubu, okay, baseball club. Yakubu people running up and down the stairs as part of their warm up training. In fact, ex um, co curricular activities such as, you know, Yaku, Kendo, um, Judo, and things like that. The teachers and the coaches actually don't do anything until um, they actually have to give instruction. So a lot of it um, depends on the the captain's leadership and also the members' self-discipline. So before you even get started with, the, for example, a soccer game, um, you do warm-up. The warm-up is done by the students themselves and it is expected that you will do it. And it is only when you start the real game or the real training that the coach or the manager will come out and give you instruction. And underneath the Gakubu people we have here, this is um, a group of kids. I think they are doing some sort of um, Lakugo. Okay, Lakugo is Japanese com comedy. It's like stand-up comedy, except in Japan we don't do a stand-up, we do a sitting down. So it's a traditional sit-down comedy. 
Okay, that's a teacher demonstrating how it is done. Okay. So, Japanese schools is very, um, very distinctly marked by certain events across the year. Uh, it is because Japan has a very distinctive division of the four seasons. School starts in April, that's when spring starts, and then it ends in uh, about um, December, okay, which is when winter comes. So have a really long uh, New Year's break. In between that time, the busiest people, uh, the busiest students, shall I say, are the year 12 students. That's a time they have to go to different unis to do um, different exams or different courses. Even they do have a thing called Senta Shiken, which is which translates to center exam. That is a little bit like our HSC, but the really elite universities don't take that. They don't accept that score. They think that test was too easy for them. So therefore, if you want to go to really uh, reputable universities, they will really um, they usually require you to go in and sit for a different exam altogether. And all that happens between December and April. Okay, that's when the in intake periods. Okay, so knowing that the seasons are very well um, well divided, um, let's see what happens in each season. Now, in spring, um, usually it's when people get started, so not a lot of things. It's usually cultural events in their own community, but things get excited in summer. In summer, we have sports carnival, which is called Undokai. Now, sports carnival in Japan is very different to how we do uh, athletics carnival in Australia. <coughs> in Australia, we are dead serious with our sports. We compete and compete and compete. Okay, at most we have some fun events like, you know, dress up relays or staff relay or um, maybe, you know, cheer squat sort of kind of, kind of um, moments. But in Japan, it's all about team spirit and fun and fun and fun. Of course, there is a serious competitiveness as well. So let's look at the picture from left to right. So top left, that's, a, that's actually a class dance. Each class has to do something for the sports carnival. So they actually they have to synchronize some sort of class dance. And that's when they use Tai Iku, okay, their PE time to practice. And then across the page we have, it's called um, horse riding fights. So we have three people down the bottom as horses, one person on the three, um, and the three people will, will, would cross their arms together to form a seat for the rider on top. So the rider and the horses have to move around to take the bandana off each person or the or the hat off the riders okay to to score a point and then um and then going across the page we have uh piggyback um uh, piggyback race usually it is the older kids carrying the younger kids uh running around the field to the goal and then we have um it's not basketball it's just throwing balls into the basket within the next one minute you can throw in as much as you like and they will count how many balls you earn for your class. Okay, the bottom left we have here. This is a very traditional Japanese cheering squat. Okay, their movement is extremely dramatic and they don't use microphones. They project their voice across the field and their classmates are holding color boards at the back to flip the colors around to form different shapes as they um, chant their cheer. And across the page at the bottom, we have a uh, smashing balloon uh, fun event you run across the, the field sit on the balloon um, pop it and then run back to score and of course we have the good old uh, relay which is serious sports so I hope this gives you a bit of idea as to what school life is like in Japan if you have a chance please go and check it out for yourself